Hello, welcome. This is a demonstration that was presented for a consensus 2018 of Hyperledger Fabric in a real world use case prepared by all Toros. This is a presentation of a decentralized peer to peer security transfer solution that was implemented on Fabric. Um, so we will step through the solution design, uh, hy how Hyperledger Fabric was utilized and some of the background of the use case uh, for this project. So we'll step through use case, the architecture, and we'll give a, a brief demonstration of the end solution and go from there. So jumping into the use case, specifically involving intermediaries in peer-to-peer -peer securities transfer um, on blockchain. So uh, current, current state, securities uh, settlement processes, kind of a well-known use case for, for blockchain at this point, but in the traditional uh, implementation can be a very slow, somewhat tedious process for banking institutions. Uh, a lot of processes done manually in terms of the verification of both sides of a transaction and the, the verification steps uh, that are typically involved. Um, and will in, in most cases involve at least uh, three, three active parties uh, in the settlement process, being the depository, uh, the issuer, the security, and the, the investor. So the solution here in this case mirrored that, um, that network or that group of participants. So you had the depository institution that was helping to administer the network uh, and set it up, process what were ultimately the blockchain orders, creating the security that would be represented on the blockchain or the asset represented on the blockchain. And, and lastly, perhaps most importantly, maintaining the, the banking records of the other parties involved. So we'll step through just the, the network arch architecture. And what this particularly highlights is um, Hyperledger Fabric's uh, functionality of channels and the ability to, um, within a blockchain network, on a blockchain ledger still control or customize what individual participants are able to see uh, within that network. Uh, so quick diagram, just kind of uh, some of the, the systems level or the, the technology stack with Fabric, a number of, of different pieces, but representing here just the individual components that fall underneath each of these three participants. So you have a, a two-peer network with the, the third participant being the depository. So in terms of channels, you end up with a common channel, kind of a broadcast channel, representing um, information or activity that, is, um, that can be seen by all participants. This is generally used for querying what assets have been created and what assets are available within the full network. There's the depository channel, which is essentially depositories own maintenance of the, the balances of the participants on, on the chain and the, the logging of uh, all asset transfers and their corresponding um, payment structures. Then, uh, importantly, two bilateral channels. Um, and this was kind of the main ask or request of the use case. The, the participants wanted to be able to engage in peer-to-peer -peer transactions, um, engage in a peer-to-peer -peer asset transfer, but the balance information, essentially each participant's private banking information as to essentially totals or, or items of their balance sheet and, um, and account, account balances, they did not want to be visible to the other participant. Um, so the NSD essentially was kind of the, the clearinghouse or an end settlement um, processor for those balances. So each participant could, on their respective channel, view their balances but not have that information be uh, visible to the other participant. And then ultimately for transacting, there was a three-party channel for both, both the peers and the, the NSD um, institution. So and essentially the distinction between this and a common channel is if you can picture ultimately uh, and in the future is the intention of adding more parties and having this be a kind of widespread network with NSD um, in the center, each transacting trio would be represented by this sort of channel. Um, and then all participants, so it could be five, six, or, or more, would collectively be on the, the common channel. 
Um, so in terms of, of chain code, the smart contract logic um, employed on the network, one of the one of the smart contracts was book. This was deployed on that depository channel and was essentially in charge of maintaining the records of the various quantities uh, held by each member and then was updated upon receiving events for a securities transfer. Instruction is essentially the smart contract logic um, that executed the securities transfer. So this would be on the three participant uh, channel between the two peers in NSD and would record and log the, the transfer quantities of all the securities, um, the security issuances uh, executed on the network. Position is essentially the smart contract executing that banking account uh, type of information. So each peer um, with NSD, uh, when they wanted to query um, off the ledger to see and update their their holdings, their their positions uh, individually, uh, this was executed on the position contract. The security finally being on the common channel, which is really just a a running uh, ledger of all the assets that had been created on the network. So the ultimate solution allowed for um, really creation of, of any blockchain representing asset or, or any asset um, that was to be recorded on the, the blockchain. So in this, this case, it was a, a bond issuance, but allowing for you know, creation of, of other assets. Um, so they, the list of available assets being on the, um, on the common security uh, smart contract. Um, in terms of the technology stack, um, this was utilizing again Hyperledger Fabric. Um, so Alturos uh, designed and implemented a, a client-facing uh, web interface. And also um, at the time, sort of the version of Hyperledger Fabric, the, the REST API was uh, somewhat in development. So there was some work that Alturos did also uh, to, to develop sort of customized uh, REST interface for the, the web. Uh, facing UI to uh, to interact with. So that will jump over quickly to um, the demonstration of the ultimate solution. So you see here that we have three windows open. Um, this would be uh, after logging in um, to each organization's uh, individual uh, interface. Um, so they all have unique access. Um, so this being the NSDs window, you see here um, in contrast to, to the other peers, um, some of the unique functionality or uh, accessibility for the NSD is to, as we see here, create new securities. Um, so these are the, the blockchain representation here of the, uh, the bond issuance or the bond asset. Uh, to be transferred. Also allowing for the NSD, again, as that uh, account holding entity within the network uh, to establish what the, the actual cash positions of the other participants are. So this, again, being the centralized view that is available to NSD. And then we'll see in a moment here that each of the other participants can see transactions uh, or transaction history for the assets, but their balance positions, uh, the sensitive uh, cash cash position information, you'll see here that they see a unique slice of that data particular to their organization, and they do not see the, um, the other organization's uh, holdings. So, Two, two primary issuance or uh, settlement mechanisms that were employed in the solution, very common in the, the financial settlement space. So free of payment um, and delivery versus payment mechanisms. And the logic employed is a fairly um, simple matching logic. Um, so essentially both, both parties would initiate the same transaction command on that instruction chain code. One would, one would be initiating 
the transfer and one would be initiating the receipt. And the logic employed required that um, all the metadata that you can see here, um, so all the, the account specifics that had to match exactly for the transaction to be um, approved. Uh, so that was sort of the control mechanism used here. So required um, specifying the security um, and then details here you can see reference is uh, more or less just a, another layer of unique identifiers to uh, sort of for the, a future proofing of the concept to allow for a unique identifier here just kind of being a generic uh, reference number employed. And so we see that the status it's uh, briefly goes to matched um, as the chain code is processing those two sides of the transaction, someone initiating a, a transfer and another party uh, initiating a receipt command to the chain code. And then as soon as it's matched, it's, it's translated to status uh, executed. And so we'll still see here, each, each participant sees the transaction or their side of the transaction that they have initiated. And then you see on NSD, there is the, the dual view of both of those uh, chain code invocations um, that were used. So here we'll run um, briefly through the similar transaction. So that was uh, free of payment. And then the, the second demonstration here being uh, delivery versus payment. Um, so just requires uh, also including uh, some of that cash balance account uh, information also needs to match in the event that it's uh, delivery versus payment. And it is in in that sense that this um, we feel will it will is an important use case um, and one at least for the the immediate future. Now permanently will will continue to be frequently required um, in the sense that if parties are transacting with traditional uh, fiat currencies um, but want the transaction history, the ledger to be on blockchain, it's 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 what we saw here, and will will frequently be required that there continues to be somewhat of a traditional banking intermediary involved in some sense for the handling of that, those, those fiat transfers. So kind of a, a hybrid solution that, uh, that was required in this instance. So we see here um, the, the status, um, if you saw in the, the previous screen, uh, when one party has initiated will we'll sit in that initiated uh, state um, waiting for the other counterparty or waiting for essentially a, a matching record to be posted to the, the blockchain through the uh, instruction smart contract. So here's some of that additional detail required for delivery versus payment um, matching that uh, cash transfer that needs to occur again also needs to be needs to be 100 percent matched for the instruction chain code to validate the transaction request and process it so we see matched there briefly as the transaction is processing and then moves to executed. And each side seeing the transaction event uh, in the ledger and now here uh, NSD we see the balances uh, have updated and revised the quantity transfer that's occurred and then again that both both sides of the transaction 
logged within the the NSD ledger through its through its book chain code. And each side again sees their updated positions in terms of security and their cache position, but does not see the other the other party side, which is one of the main requirements. So again, it's it's providing parties all the access to the security transaction events. Everything that occurs there is visible to them, but the resulting positions and balances of each party um, is made is continued to be uh, private. So thanks very much for watching. We appreciate you uh, taking the time. Hopefully this was informative. Um, and if you have uh, any further questions, please feel free to reach out to us. Thanks very much.